Okay, so we're gonna today we're gonna talk about DNA replication. Um, but first, let's go over uh, last uh, yesterday's class in which we talked about uh, the structure of DNA. So for review, what are the three components of DNA, of a DNA uh, molecule? Who can tell me? That's right. There's a five carbon sugar shown here, and it's called what? That's right, deoxyribose. What are the other two components? That's right, there's a phosphate group shown here. And finally, in the center, we have the nitrogenous bases. Why are they called nitrogenous bases? That's right, because they have uh, the element nitrogen. And that's shown not in this diagram, but in, your, uh, uh, in the book on page 282. So now we have the structure of uh, a DNA molecule. Um, what is it, let me ask you this question. What is the difference between this uh, uh, five carbon sugar and this one? You're right, it's a trick question. This uh, five carbon sugar is identical to this one and this one and so on. Same with the phosphate groups on each nucleotide. Um, however, uh, the nitrogenous bases vary and that variability allows for the transmission of information. These can be in all kinds of different orders. And as we'll see in a couple days, the order that these nucleotide uh, sequences occur will determine, will code, in other words, for specific proteins. Proteins, all the proteins that uh, make up uh, the individual that you are. Okay, another interesting fact about DNA, uh, I've sh shown three sets of nucleotides and their corresponding strands. There are hundreds of millions in each molecule of base pairs. In, uh, and each molecule constitutes a chromosome. And we'll talk about that in the future also. And each organism ha has a set number of chromosomes. Human beings have 46. Um, and 23 pairs. Now, all those molecules together uh, constitute what's called the genome, which is the entirety of all the information, all the genetic information needed to make that particular living organism. In the case of humans, the, a genome is the information needed to make you. Okay, so uh, <coughs> now, as an activity, I want you guys to get into groups and either look up in your book or use whatever resource you need in the room, you know, computer if you'd like to look on the internet, and answer the following question. Which uh, cells in the human body have an entire copy of the genome? And take a minute to find the answer to that. Okay, so what did you guys come up with? That's right, each cell in the human body has, an, has a copy of not just genetic information that that cell needs, but an entire copy of who you are, of your genetic information, um, which is amazing. Um, so that would be like if you had trillions of the amount of information stored in the genome, which is about what you would see on a DVD. Trillions of copies of that DVD. Um, okay, remember that we started out as a single-celled organism. So that means with one copy of your genome. So that means that uh, genome has been copied trillions of times, one for each cell. How does that happen? <coughs> okay. So let's look at uh, a little bit more information about the structure, a little bit more review. Look on handout two, it's a simplified version of, of uh, handout one of the DNA molecule. And that illustrates, what do you notice about that di diagram? That's right, it is a double helix. What does that mean? Uh, well, helix means what? Right, that means 
that the molecule is spiral shaped, kind of like a great big staircase in the castle. Why, why is it called a double helix? Right, because each uh, pair, each nitrogenous base is paired off uh, with its corresponding base, uh, which itself forms a strand. And there are two strands corresponding to each other that wrap around each other. Uh, and how do these base pairs, uh, are there rules about what bases can match up with what bases? Right. Uh, the G can only correspond with the C, never anything else. And A is only uh, paired off with a T, never any variation. So now let's look at handout number three, I believe. DNA replication. Okay, what difference do you see in that diagram? It's not accidental. Right, the molecule has unwound, it's no longer a helix, it's spread out flat, okay, and the two strands are being parted from one another. Those two things must happen before uh, replication can occur. Okay, now that those two things have happened, the actual business of replication can happen. Okay, so um, once those two things happen, uh, an enzyme called what? Anyone remember from the reading? Right, DNA polymerase comes and reads each strand and adds base by base to the uh, opposite strand that's forming along uh, the replication. So it comes, for example, it comes across the C and places uh, a G right here. Then as it goes, moves down, it sees an A and puts uh, its corresponding uh, base pair on the opposite strand, which is T. It sees a T and again puts an A. It sees the C and puts a G right here all along down the strand. So when it reads the C, what is it going to put? That's right, uh, it's going to put a G on the corresponding growing strand. A T? Right, it's going to put A right here. And it's going to repeat this process at a surprising rate, 1,000 base pairs per second, until the molecule is completely replicated. And each of the new strands is going, going to be placed in, you know, one in the original cell. And as the cell divides, the new cell is going to get a copy of that new molecule. And we'll talk about that probably next week when we talk about mitosis and meiosis. Um, okay, so what I have for you to do now is a DNA puzzle. Look on handout number five. On handout number five, uh, it shows the puzzle that you guys will be, have to work on. I'll put you into groups once again, and you will have to solve this puzzle. You'll have pieces of the component, components of DNA, and you'll have to put them together in the correct uh, locations. The phosphate and the uh, uh, deoxyribose sugar will be easy to put in their correct places because they don't vary. Uh, there's only one kind of each. Now, when you put the nitrogenous bases together, you'll have to obey uh, our base pair of rules. If you see a T, you'll have to put an A. It will be incorrect if you put a C or a G next to the T because that violates our rules. So why don't you guys uh, start working on that, and I'll come around and, uh, and help you if you have any questions.